Hello everyone, welcome to Austin Challenge. My name is Peter. In this video, I will be working on this set of leather seats. Uh, they are from Volvo car. I'm not sure the model exactly. Uh, the only thing I know, they are from Cabriolet. Uh, the car is about 20, 25 year old. So if you are interested in leather restoration, watch this video as I'm going to show step by step how to bring this leather to as best as possible condition. <music> So first of all, let's have a quick look on the condition of the leather. So as you can see, the leather isn't in the best condition overall. However, from my perspective, from perspective of restoration, it is actually in very nice condition as there will be nice transformation on it. Uh, overall, there is no really major issues. There's no rips, no holes. Uh, I will have to use filler to reduce some of the creases, uh, but in general, uh, it will be very nice job to do. One thing I'll be looking at when I'm restoring leather is not just the how it's gonna look like after the job, uh, but also I want to make sure that the features of leather will be there. So in this case, the leather is quite soft, so we won't have much issue when it comes to front seats, uh, but the back section is quite hard. So we'll have to deal with that after the restoration. For the restoration process, I'll be using products from Geist. Uh, it's a company that uh, creates product um, only for leather restoration, for leather care. So I'm going to use their products for this job. Uh, of course, every job I'm starting with when it comes to leather restoration is I want to give good clean force just to see what exactly I have there. Uh, I'm going to start with vacuuming the surface, uh, remove any loose door that I have there, and after that I'm going to clean the leather deeply uh, to have clean surface for the further step. For cleaning the leather, I'm going to use this product, Geist Rapid Leather and Vinyl Cleaner Pro. Uh, this is strong leather cleaner, so it's perfect for leather restoration uh, to get rid of any dirt. Uh, main thing when we clean leather is we don't want to overwet it, so I'm going to use this cleaner with a foamer. Uh, so instead of spraying the liquid on the leather, I will use foam. So in this case, as you can see, the leather isn't too dirty, but before any restoration, we start from cleaning, regardless how dirty it is, we want to make sure we have the surface cleaned for the further stages. When it comes to cleaning the leather, I'm sure you have noticed that this cloth that I use for wiping off the leather turns into this color. Uh, it's not dirt, well it is a bit of dirt there, but also this clearly shows that I'm actually pulling the color from the leather. If this happens, that means that there is no top coat or very little top coat left on this leather. Uh, the top coat, it's a protective layer, same as on the car paints, you have clear coat, on the leather you have top coat. However, when it comes to top coat on the leather, the protective barrier, barrier is very tiny. In the case of restoration, for me, this is an excellent sign, but because I still would want to remove the top coat before applying the paint. Uh, however, if you see this, when you do a maintenance clean and you're not gonna restore the leather, that's a very bad sign. So for maintenance, I would recommend to use different cleaners altogether. Uh, this I would use only for very extremely dirty seats, but for regular maintenance and for average cleaning, 
uh, what I would use is Gaze Rapid and Vinyl Cleaner. So now I'm just going to keep going, clean all the set and then I'll show you the next step. So I have the leather cleaned and the next step in the leather restoration is we want to sand the surface to create better grip for the new paint. For sanding the leather I'm going to use uh, formula gradation sanding pads. Uh, what we want to do is we want to give good sanding, we don't have to go mad with it, uh, but just we want to make sure that we can cover as much area as we can. Uh, also very important thing is when it comes to sanding is we want to avoid sanding the stitching, that's because the stitching is very easily damaged. The seat sanded, uh, after sanding I blew out the anedos that could gather in the joints. Uh, the next step is I have to degrease the leather. So for this purpose I'm going to use uh, Gaze Dissolve, it's a solvent cleaner. So what this product does, it will obviously degrease the surface, but it also dissol it dissolves the uh, top coat or the color itself. So in this case we can actually pull it off a little bit of more of that color. And for kind of major repairs, like when you're doing the full seats, I would actually recommend this product. Uh, when it comes to small repairs, if you're doing just a bolster, you could use different solvent cleaner with sort, sort of smaller gradation. A uh, solvent cleaner that doesn't dissolve the leather as much as this. After degreasing the leather, what we need to do, we need to make sure that the leather is dry before we do the next step. Uh, for that, I'm going to use heat gun. Uh, even if the leather was dry in touch, I still will use the heat gun because there is a little bit of moisture always there. We used the leather cleaner, even though we use it as a foam, there is still a bit of moisture there. Then we use the solvent, so uh, at this stage leather has no protection whatsoever because all the top coat is gone. So that bit of moisture always will go into the leather. So I'm going to use the heat gun down now on this seat. Uh, when I finish with it, then I'm going to carry on with sanding on the rest of the set. Uh, but before the next step, I will leave the seats uh, for a few hours to kind of let them dry naturally as well. So at this stage the leather is well dried, I left it for a few hours. Uh, next step will be filling the imperfections. Uh, for that I'm going to use Gaze Leather Filler Pro. Uh, the filler is obviously flexible, so I'm going to apply on the places where you we can see the biggest damage. So I used the filler, uh, I only went over the deepest creases. Uh, this is 20 year old leather and it's going back to the car that is 20 year old. So there's no point to try to fill every single imperfection. Uh, some of them, they look like imperfections, but they are just natural features of leather. So to have that natural look uh, for 20 year old leather is actually better to just try to improve them instead of trying to uh, make it as smooth as possible. It takes about half an hour for the filler to dry, uh, so I left the seat for this long. 
Now I'm ready for the next step, which is sanding down the filler. Uh, so I'm going to sand it down. Then I will degrease the leather again and I will give it a bit of time for drying. And after that, I'll be ready for spraying. After degreasing the leather, uh, I used the heat gun to dry it off initially, then I left the leather to sort of dry naturally as well uh, for a few hours. Uh, and that's very important, instead of going with the paint straight away, uh, the best thing is to leave it for a few hours so the moisture evaporates naturally. So now I'm ready for spraying. Uh, I'm going to use the heat gun again just to warm up the leather before the, before the first coat. And when we spray the leather, it's very important to don't try to spray it in one go. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple of tiny layers. Every coat I'll be drying the leather, so, so everything will go right if we do this way. So I have the front of driver's seat already sprayed, uh, now I have to do the back. Uh, I sprayed roughly three coats uh, for, for this seat. Uh, there is no really number that I can give you uh, how many coats you need. Sometimes two is enough, sometimes four isn't enough. So we just have to see what way it comes up and just spray as many coats as it needs. When we spray in many coats, uh, sometimes what might happen, you might actually have that bit of roughness on the, on the paint. So what I use is uh, sort of scotch pads like this. They kind of a little bit aggressive, so before we finish the spraying, we just do a bit of rubbing on the leather, that removes the roughness, and then we just do last coat with very fine mist of the paint, and then it should come up nicely. So now I have a good bit of work to do, I have to finish this seat, I have to finish the back section, I have to do the backs of the seat. Uh, when I have that done, uh, I'm going to leave the seat till tomorrow, and I'll be spraying top coat. It is necessary to spray this uh, paint with the top coat. Uh, that's because without it, this leather won't have durability and won't have any protection. So I'm ready for spraying the top coat. Uh, to get the most optimal result, the most natural look of leather, what we need to do we need to mix 30% of top coat gloss and 70% of top coat matte. We also need to add about 3 to 5% of hardener. And when we spray in the top coat, uh, we also, same as in the case of paint, uh, we do tiny layers, we apply the layer, then we dry it, and then we do another one.
So I sprayed the top coat, uh, I dried it well. Uh, the job is almost finished, but actually we can do another thing to improve it. Uh, after spraying, there might be a little bit of roughness on the surface. So what we can do, we can use 4000 gradation sanding pads and we can gently sand the leather. If we do that, we have very nice in touch surface. So the job is finished. Uh, let's have a look at the seats before and after. The very last thing I'm going to do with this set of leather is I'm going to leave it till tomorrow and I'm going to apply leather conditioner. Applying conditioner will restore the natural features of the leather. So that's everything in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions regarding leather restoration or products used for this process, comment below. If you like this type of content, make sure to subscribe my channel and see you on the next one. <laughs>